Hi friends, this is a video about do's and don'ts as far as applied GATE CS course itself is concerned, as far as GATE 2022 is concerned. Again, this whole video is based on frequently asked questions that we encounter from our students either in the chat window in the live sessions or questions that we get in the ticketing system or via the emails. So we thought it would be good to place all of these frequently asked questions in a single video so that students will get much better clarity of all the commonly asked questions, especially of students who participate and who are part of the applied gate course itself. Okay, so let's go step by step. First is a question about note taking. Please remember that note taking is a must. Without this, you will not be able to revise successfully and revision is a must for gate given the vastness of the syllabus. The best way to take notes is to write your own notes. Nothing beats that. Because when you write your notes, you will draw diagrams the way you would understand it. We, we have seen students who write notes with English plus their own mother tongue. Right? So there is nothing that beats your own notes because the purpose of the notes is to revise fast and to make note of the important things. So nothing beats this. But we also understand that there may be some students and working professionals who may not have time to write your own notes. So the next best idea is to use our notes. Again, our notes are publicly available on our website. Please download them. A lot of our students actually take printouts of them or have them in a device like an iPad and they add highlights and annotations on top of our notes. Again, these annotations or highlights are also very important because our notes are written in a generic fashion based on our own videos by our mentors. These annotations or highlights will help you focus on those aspects that are important for you. Right. So if you don't have time, you can certainly use our notes, print them out or use them on a device like an iPad, add annotations and highlights. That also works, but nothing beats writing your own notes. That's the best. The next important aspect is the practice tests. Now, how should you take the practice tests and how should you make the most out of it? Please watch the videos where we cover the concepts and solve a bunch of problems very similar to gate questions. Actually, a lot of solved problems are actually previous year gate questions. Now, once you're done with it, please revise everything that you have learned. Again, this revision ideally should be from the notes that you've written or the notes that we have provided with your own personalized annotations. Revise it only after revising it. Please take the practice test. That is very, very important. And most of the questions in the practice test are at a medium level. Some of them are also tricky questions. And intentionally, we have made some questions slightly above the gate level. I will give you a justification on why we have them as medium and tricky and not trivial and easy questions. I'll just come to that in a minute or two. Now, if you have, once you've finished your practice test, if you're scoring 40 plus percent marks in the practice test, that's, a, that's pretty good actually. Don't get demor demoralized or demotivated with it. 40 plus marks is good because most of the questions in these practice tests are medium and tricky. Now, what should you do next? The moment you get some 40% or more marks, retry all the questions that you've made mistakes in. Don't directly go check out the solution. Re-attempt the questions that you have not been able to solve in the first in the first attempt. Even after retrying, if you're not able to solve it, debug. Understand whether you have made a silly mistake. Understand whether you have a conceptual gap. Try to understand why you could not solve rest of the questions. Once you have debugged and retried, then move on to the next topic or the next set of topics. Most importantly, if you're scoring 40 or 50 mark, 50 percent marks, please do not get motivated, demotivated. OK, it's actually good because to tell you the truth, a lot of toppers in the last couple of years that we have seen have actually scored about 40 to 50 percent marks in these practice tests. And by retrying and debugging why they have not been able to solve, they have consistently improved their scores and got to 70 plus marks in the final gate exam. So you are very similar to many toppers. So there is nothing to get demotivated about it. Just keep going forward. Don't again, we see a lot of students who get 40 to 50 50 percent marks in these practices and they think, hey, I can never crack gate and they get demotivated and they leave it. That's not the right thing to do. Remember, a lot of toppers were in your shoes in the previous years. Next. If you're, if you're obtaining less than 40% marks, then rewatch all the concepts related to which the problems you could not solve. Rewatch those videos. Okay, wherever you could not solve, rewatch those videos to understand the concepts better. Revise your notes. Again, retake the questions, debug what you're, what, what you're, uh, what you're lacking, and then move on to the next topic. Very simple. Now, 
the practice questions that we have, their purpose, the reason we have them at medium and some of them tricky, some of them even slightly above gate level is the purpose of the practice questions is to build your problem solving skills. That is their job. Again, we have a dedicated video on how to build problem solving skills for gate. Please check out that video. We'll also link it in the description section below. Again, the practice questions are not, remember, they are not trivial repetitions of solved problems. Because if I just take a solved problem, change the number slightly, modify it slightly, and again ask that, you're not building your problem solving skills. The practice questions are intentionally made slightly tricky because if you can solve these practice questions, which are medium hardness and tricky, you can solve easy questions, obviously, right? And most importantly, please do not compare your results with others at this point of time. You can compare them come November, December, when you're taking mock tests and grand tests and all those tests, right? At this point, you are competing with yourself. Suppose, imagine if you're getting 40% marks today, your objective is how do I go from 40% to 60 to 70% in the next few months? The competition is not with others, the competition is with yourself. Please do not miss that. Okay, that's very, very important. Cool. Now coming to revision, this is a very often asked question. We strongly recommend our students to follow this method, which is do a weekly revision. At the end of every week, spend two to three hours going through all the concepts that you have learned in that week. Similarly, have a monthly revision. At the end of month, you can spend two to three days revising everything that you've learned in that month. Similarly, at the end of every two to three months, spend something like four to six days revising everything that you've learned in the two to three months. And when I say revise, the concept here is you revise through your notes, revise everything that you've written in your notes, and revision through problem solving is one of the best. After you've revised your notes, go ahead and solve problems. For example, at the end of the week, you can solve, so at the end of the week, you can solve practice tests. At the end of the month, you can solve subject tests. At the end of every two to three months, you can solve multi-subject tests. These, these tests are designed keeping the monthly, keeping the weekly, monthly, and this is like a quarter roughly, right? Three months is a quarter, right? So the quarterly revision strategy in mind. And remember, as far as revision is concerned, the first iteration, again, this whole thing is your first iteration of learning. The first iteration basically means you're learning all, each subject one after the other in the first iteration, in, in the first iteration itself. The first iteration inherently has weekly, monthly, and quarterly revision inbuilt in it. The first iteration is the key. If you do this well, the next iterations become very, very simple. In the second iteration, you go through all the subjects, you revise all the subjects, you revise all your notes, and then take grand tests and mock tests. The third iteration is typically the last two to three weeks before the examination, where you revise all of your notes thoroughly. If time permits, solve a few problems. Otherwise, you can just skip all the questions primarily focus on having the right mindset and revising everything once. If you do your first iteration properly, your first iteration is going through each subject with the weekly, monthly and quarterly revision strategy. If you do that properly, rest everything will fall in place. The second iteration will become easy. You will improve in the second iteration. The third iteration is basically revising everything before the examination itself. Cool. Now for revision, a great way is to first have the long form notes. It could be your own notes that you've written or it could be our notes with annotations. This is called the long form notes or the long notes. Also, it's very, very helpful if you have short notes because short notes helps you revise the concepts in a shorter window of time than the long form notes, right? Again, different people have different ways of making short notes. Again, if you can make one short notes for every revision, while you're revising it, just take a piece of paper and keep writing all the key highlights that you have learned. That is actually great. Again, remember your long form notes has all the details. Short form is only meant for revising quicker, right? So in the short form notes, if you can make one for every revision, that's great. If you don't, I mean, this is ideal, but if you can't do it, take your long form notes, write annotations or create some highlights on it as, as, as part of your short notes. Again, very importantly in your notes, in your whole notes, whether long form or short form notes, always create a section where you highlight all the mistakes that you've made earlier, especially silly mistakes and conceptual mistakes that you've made earlier. Making a note of mistakes helps you. And if you revise it as part of your revision strategy, it helps you avoid these mistakes in the future. Okay. Very, very importantly, please focus on avoiding or minimizing silly mistakes. 
They can be very, very costly in the examination, especially if you have tricky questions. We have seen brilliant students who made silly mistakes and lost good ranks. Again, always add your silly mistakes to your notes. This is exactly this point. Add your mistakes that you have made earlier to your notes because that will help you revise. Again, we have a dedicated video called Problem Solving Skills video, which I link to in the description section, how to build problem solving skills for GATE. In that, we specifically focus on silly mistakes and how to minimize them over time. Cool. Again, analyzing your mistakes is very, very important. Let me give you some examples of students that we have seen without naming them. So we have seen, let's say there is a student S1 who scored 60% marks in practice tests, but he does not do any analysis of his mistakes. There is a second student S2 who secured only 35 to 40% marks, but who does a detailed analysis of all the mistakes they have done, why the mistakes happened. Is it a silly mistake? Is it a conceptual gap? Now, through that detailed analysis and working on those mistakes, the student S2 will go from 35% marks to easily 70 plus percent marks. And the student 1 who secured 60% marks and who does not improve because he or she is not actually doing detailed analysis will not win in the long run. We have seen a lot of average and even below average students who just secured one third or 35% marks in practice tests who have done detailed analysis and who have won, who have gotten in the top 100 ranks last year. Right. So this is super duper important. Again, even if you're scoring 60% marks, please do a detailed analysis on all the mistakes that you've done. If you do not do analysis, you are only at a disadvantage in the long run, especially by the time you reach the examination. Cool. So another very interesting question here is imagine if you're 80% confident about an answer, what should you do about it? Very important. In the examination, 80% is a pretty good confidence level. Go, go answer that as best as you can. But when you're learning and preparing, when you're solving practice tests, when you're, when you're solving problems, if you're 80% confident, make a note of the question. Just note down the number of the question. And after you have solved it, ask yourself, what is the reason for the 20% uncertainty? Debug that. Is it because you did not understand a concept well? Is it because you do not know a formula correctly? Is it because there is some misunderstanding in your conceptual understanding? So debug that. Debug why you have the 20% uncertainty, revise and get clarity. That is very, very important because this 20% uncertainty that you are leaving now could cost you dearly in the examination, right? So as far as mentorship itself is concerned, if you have any question, again, uh, as many of you know, we have started a ticketing system to address students' questions faster than via email. So please post your question through the ticketing system. You would have got an email about it in detail or leave a comment. You know, under every video, we have a comment section, right? Leave a comment under the video or send, a, send, us, a, send us a query to, through the ticketing system with the timestamp so that we know exactly. You can say, hey, five minutes, 32 seconds, right? So at this exact point, I didn't understand how this equation came up or I didn't, I didn't understand this diagram. That way, we can give you very personalized response because we exactly understand where you're stuck. Similarly, if you're solving a problem, let's say you're on a piece of paper, you're solving a problem and somewhere here you got stuck. Take a picture of the solution that you've written and tell us where you got stuck so that we can give you personalized response on how to get unstuck. That is very, very important, right? I hope these, are, again, this whole video is a, is basically an aggregation of lot of common questions that we get and we hope that these do's and don'ts, especially with respect to practicing questions, especially with respect to revision, right? I hope, again, especially also with respect to note taking, we hope this will help you prepare better for your gate preparation for the year 2022.